Hi guys and welcome back to episode 14 of the raid series. So we had a really good successful raid on Interchange before this. And we are sitting quite healthy, I would say. Healthy-ish for uh, the loot side of things. I uh, recorded those a few days ago, the, the last episode, and I got the insurance back. So I did sell a couple of things, wasn't very much, but this is pretty much everything from the insurance. Um, so you can actually see, like, you know, this a bit of a clusterfuck, to be honest. Um, for this episode, I want to go back into Interchange. I want to get those three things marked, the three uh, tankers. So we're going to go for the three tankers marked and also uh, the three manifests, so Idea, Oli, Goshen. Um, I'm going to try and do it slower, which is, you know, unheard of for me. Um, and we also still need to kill scavs. So we've got, you know, 19 more scavs to go. Uh, to do with the hideout, our security upgrade has completed. Actually, no, it's ready to be upgraded, sorry. And this one's ready to be upgraded too. So we're going we're gonna to start those two upgrades. Slowly work on getting that upgrade up, uh, the hideout up. Um, put the fuel in there. So now we've actually got some fuel running there. Not a big deal to have the fuel running at the moment, but those blue containers uh, we can sell eventually too. Uh, coming over to the scav junk box, Ooh, we've got a bit of room in here to put stuff. Get the light bulbs. I don't remember if we've done illumination yet. Illumination? I think it's like illumination level uh, one or two. You need heaps of light bulbs for. We might be able to do a cheeky upgrade there. Oh, we don't have the menu music on. That's what we need. Be quiet. I hate it when it's quiet. Like every argument. Lots of screaming and then sound. And spark plug. So we need six, uh, six, eight spark plugs. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we need two more spark plugs for the quest. Uh, car battery or car repair. So that one's up covered. We'll get these tubes in there. Not a big deal to save some of these items early, um, but we will try and hold on to some. The fuel, sorry, the water filter is the most selling for a lot. So let's get rid of that. Whilst they're still selling for a lot, um, we'll try and make some money from that. Mm, what else do we have? Do we have anything else that we could probably get rid of that make us a bit of money? We're going to sell that 1G phone um, because that's easy money. GM counters won't sell for anything at the moment, unfortunately. We could sell stuff to get the, the trader rep up. Like, we just sell it for the sake of selling it, but we won't at the moment because we want to sell stuff to level up our traders. So, uh, therapist. Actually, put because we bought that, that container, the, uh, the scav junk box. We don't really need to worry too much for that one. But there's an extra 100k for us. Grab the RAM, sell that one too, because we're not really something that is a big deal. Now, uh, with Skia, we don't need the Bell Clava. We'll hold on to that PSO site. That would be quite handy with a lot of guns. Prepper, we need to actually get Prepper to the next level. This is going to be a bit of a priority. I think maybe next episode or the one after we'll, get, we'll work on getting... Um, back into customs to get that proper series done. The main focus is going to be to get the Epsilon container early, which is the uh, it's the 2x4 container. And we're probably going to try and bypass and skip the Beta container, which is from getting uh, Peacekeeper to level 4. So we have options um, of how we want to do, do the playthrough. I think we'll go quickly towards the Epsilon container and then go uh, across there. Now, we do have some pretty solid gear on. And we could save it for another raid, but that's not how I play. So we're going to go sweaty straight away. Now, with this ADAR that we looted, um, it, this is a bit crazy because right now, we could actually ID this. Uh, right now, 995 ammunition is super expensive. So uh, we got, I think, three, maybe 90 rounds of it. That's, that's, I think they're selling for about $10 a round. And it's like 880 rubles for that, so... Uh, that's what's that? 88,000 rubles worth of ammunition here. Um, what we can do is we can go like that, put that there. We'll use the ADAR, and then we can sell this magazine. And we'll sell that for about 34,000. I'll go 37. Sell over time. We're not in a rush. Right, so there's another magazine. Uh, we need two more markers. So they're for, sold from Prapper. Now, if you do need to level up Prapper, or spend money on Prapper, and you want to like just spend some money, but without wasting it, 
You could buy yourself probably 10 markers and put them somewhere. I don't know if they... No, they don't go in here. But if you had a, a spare container, you could chuck them in there because you're actually going to need a lot of markers over, over your playthrough. All right, so that is pretty much everything we need for the raid. Uh, we're going to go to interchange. Just thinking, do we trade this? So the big, the big difference here, you're looking at two things um, for the helmets. I haven't really covered gear too much as, as I've been playing through, and I probably should go a little bit more into detail. Um, but armor class four versus armor class three, the same durability, high ricochet chance. But probably the big noticeable thing is the ergonomics difference. Um, but for the price difference, it's it's you know. Oh, and also this one doesn't cover the ears, whereas this one does. No, it doesn't actually. All right, so much the same then for that part. Um, and you can sell that for 36, so we could buy two more helmets. I don't know. It's something to take note of, but seeing that we're using a Gen 4 Assault, uh, I'm not going to repair it. Um, if I was to repair with Prepper, it would make no difference. If it's Skier, no difference. And Mechanic, I'm paying 10,000 rubles to get like one durability out of it, so it's not worth it. Uh, Med-wise, we're going to go in. We're going to take our biggest med because it's actually something important. We want to survive this raid. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So let's crack straight into the next raid. And hopefully we have a smooth experience. All right, so we late spawned a minute 40. It's not a good thing. Um, let's see. We are on the Oli side of... Uh, Let's get the back. We don't need to go for the PMC fight right now. What I want to do is start marking this stuff. So if we go all the way at the front, I think our extract's going to be the front too. It is. It's a railway extract. We could go straight down to that fight. It's not something we really want to do right now or want to do right now. Um, I'm going to mark the tanker at the front. So it's one less thing to worry about with marking. And then we're going to head into Ollie. And we're going to go, sh we're going to go through the entire mall on the ground floor. Pretty much get to three... Manifest. Now, by the time we get it up to the first tanker and then back up, oh, like, oh. To stop this bleeder, we're gonna die from bleeding. We're in a fucking shit spot right here. Bloody light spawns. And you can stop your heels with your left click. I want to try and get behind this barrier. Holy crap. What a, what a sketch start. Alright, so when your heel gets to full, your left click. And it cancels the end of the heal. So if you try and speed up your healing process a little bit like that.
Armor's not too bad right now. It's it's not great. But it's not too bad right now. I, I'm so surprised he didn't try and try and push us then. I'm so surprised. And we might have to restart this raid just purely for the fact of our uh, ankles aren't going to last it. So that would be another player fighting over there, I'm, I'm guessing. I'd be very surprised why he would fight there and then run off. It sounded like he had an AK, so why would you use a pistol? Such a less than ideal start, but we good. I'm seriously just amazed he didn't keep pushing me after that. All right, so we have two uses left on our painkillers. The painkillers go for 170 seconds, so just under three minutes. If we were to yes. go into the mall, we'd have from now probably about six minutes to find painkillers. Yes. Or we'd be... You struggle with him. Plus, we're going to run out of meds while running around on blacked out legs. So, what we're going to do is we're going to mark the tanker at the front. And then I think I'm going to restart the raid as an extract and start it again. This, once you late spawn, when you late spawn, it gets really, really confusing because like you got no idea where they are from the start um people could be right up on top of you like i'm amazed how close he was i really only ran like 30 meters like late spawns is one thing i would say just to get their head around and fix now med cars can have uh, any sort of meds in the back of them unless you open them uh, but they're very inconsistent there's one on shoreline that's really good up at the resort but What's that one? There's so much fighting going on outside. Crunch, crunch, crunch. That's all I'm hearing right now. some sort of money out of it. Now, I'm still confident there's going to be at least some sort of player or the tanker ran out just then. There's going to be at least dead scavs up here, but there's some sort of player as well. Dead scav right there. What? He had no, like, the only spot I could shoot at was his head. Can't believe we didn't get him then. I can't believe you re-picked that. that. That should have been a kill for us. That second guy. <sighs> well, there goes our good gear. Happens though. It happens. Level 31 to 50. Oh, well. Now we re-gear up. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's just how it goes sometimes. But Man, I can't believe you re-picked that and I missed it. That was unfortunate. Very unfortunate. All right, now we might go the AKM, I think. All 
All right, I'll check this loadout together and we'll get back into a raid. So with that first guy that I killed, that was all nice and sweet. But the second guy, I think I either ricocheted off his helmet or just got extremely unlucky there. These things happen though. It's part of Tarkov. Um, I do talk about options up ahead, but I thought I'd just chuck that in there. All right, deploying again. I bought 90 rounds of BP ammo for the 7.62 by 39. Um, it's about 40,000 rubles off the flea market. Um, it's, it's, it's a pretty big step up from the PSMO. There's no, unless they've done some changes recently, I'll have to really check the uh, ammo chuck. They did do some changes pretty recent. I really want to know how um, how much of a change has, if any, has changed to 7.62 by 39. Because previously it was only PS and, and BP that was any use. Now jackets have actually had a really big buff recently. They've actually added it to keys spawning jackets. So if you're not checking every jacket you run past, then what are you doing with your life? Because you're probably going to find some pretty solid keys. So there's a mill base checkpoint key, which will sell for a bit. Like, you actually just farm jackets now to make money. Wouldn't be the worst idea. Um, I still think power station is one of the most solid places to uh, be looting in interchange because of all the money you can make here. Swish sells for about 40k at the moment. They might have dropped a little bit. Um, toolkits, they're, they're pretty good uh, things to be looting. They, they're dropping value. They're dropping in value now because of um, people starting to get their hideouts upgraded. But they're still not horrible. They're still good. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, these shells, you can get like some pretty cool stuff up on here. So the 1G phone here. Like that PS, PS up there. Now, I think, I, I, I don't know off the top of my head what a military checkpoint key sells for. But I've got a feeling it sells for probably maybe one to 200,000 rubles right now. Uh, and so, you know, we're up, we've got 250k right here. Now the AKM is probably worth about 100. The rest of the gear wouldn't be worth that much. So we covered our losses for this raid because of that key. But we still want to try and get everything done. So... Over here, we'll check the cash. I don't know how many people can't handle it being, it being called cash. Checking the cash. Hearing the moosin' man in the background. Right, now, AKMs are a full, full auto gun. So, we'll be using it on full auto. Kick at myself that I didn't get that second guy. That would have been bloody epic. We had the per perfect opportunity. If we got that second guy, that was full full sweaty gear, guys. Um, that would have turned it into probably... That would have been probably like more loot than I could have carried. The, the thing about that was if I got up at that any point then, I could have moved. Like it, it would have been possible, but it would have been risky. Um, and it probably would have been like the smarter move, but I was like, if this guy repeaks, then I can shoot him in the head and I'll miss the shot. If I landed that shot, which I should have, it would have been all well and well and good because I would have been had no one really between me and the extract. After that, would have got the other, would have got the tank marked, would have grabbed their loot and just ran out. But starting to believe this account's cursed and I can't land my shots on it. I am playing, playing from my mother's house at the moment. Of, uh, I'm, I'm visiting family for the uh, for the holiday season. So um, let's blame that. Let's blame that for uh, for why I died. Then one of the things I actually do preach a lot is, and a lot of people will. I think the majority of people that are that are a bit of common sense about him. We'll agree with this statement. About 99% of the deaths in Escape from Tarkov. Oh my god. About 99% of the deaths in Escape from Tarkov are your own bloody fault. The one percenters are like game freezes and you can't even aim. You know, your game disconnects. The, the healing, the healing bug. You know, like. Stuff like that. And when I say game freeze, like you have to have a pretty solid freeze. Every other time, you could have done something wrong. You, sorry, you could have done something different. You could have ran a different way. 
all that kind of stuff. What I'm trying to say is, when you die, it's your own bloody fault. You got no one else to blame but yourself, <laughs> including me. I have I have no one to blame but myself. But then I could have done stuff differently. And I think the more you actually start reflecting on how you could have done stuff differently, instead of blaming, oh, the the the, the cat ran across the my lap, you know, and all that other bullshit. The sooner you actually get to the point where you actually see some sold improvement. And I also say that it's a good idea to try stuff differently as well. Don't always play the game the exact same way. Don't don't be like, all right, I'm only going to run to power station and then run to the extra. Like, make it so you try do and do different things because in that way, you're putting yourself out of your comfort zone, for lack of better words. And hopefully we're going to learn some stuff. If you always do the same thing, you're not going to get a different result, are you? Any definition of insanity? All right, so we're going to head up the back of Ollie. This is going to be a clusterfuck of a raid. If, if we get everything done, I'll be amazed. Back of Ollie, get the... Ma Sorry, back of Idea, get the manifest. Then we'll probably go out the front. I don't know. We either got to go across the Goshen... Yes, actually, not. We're going to go... Idea, Goshen, Ollie, Tanker, Extract. Now, I've never used this site before. Be careful about these doors not rendering from a distance. Uh, I think they've actually... Hang on. They might have put these... These here. To prevent it. That if you were all the way down there, the doors wouldn't actually render. Now, I always find it's safer inside interchange than outside. I always try to get inside really quickly. Like, obviously, I went to power station this time, but in general, I try and go really quickly. Now, this door, if it's closed, someone's been there. And if the other one's closed, someone's been there. So just be really wary of that. All right, so we're checking the shelves. My money's on someone's been here because see how there's all the loot gone? There's never, it's never empty. Never completely empty. Now the only reason we're still coming in here. Like if I thought this was empty, I wouldn't even bother coming in here. Because it, unless you're trying to hunt down the players. So we've got the first of the manifest for database part one. But someone's definitely been here. All the loot was taken. There was meant to be stuff on the desk there. Now, like I said in the other episode, once you start shooting, people know that you've been here or that you're here, so you don't be sticking around too long. I think we're going to go out the front. Where was that from? I think that was from behind me. Yeah. Oh, found him. Him. 
When there's one, there's seven. We'll take the scope off. Start off. All right. Pretty sure I had BTMO, so we're gonna take the BTMO. I did at the front here. Now, if you remember what I said about how maximum 16 players on the interchange, so I know it's one of the harder maps to count, but I'm going to throw that helmet, take that one. Who's that emotion? All right, so I guess I'll try and do a little bit of a breakdown of that fight then. So the first shot rang out and I thought he was behind me. That's why I ran forwards. When he took the second shot, it was clear that he wasn't that way. Um, and so I made myself get behind cover so he didn't know exactly where I was. If I stood out in the open, tried to keep re-picking the same spot, probably going to lead to an issue. I made sure I got to a position where he would have to walk into my crosshair. Um, if he had grenades, I was in a lot of trouble then. He would have probably forced me to make a move. Um, and grenades can be very powerful in Tarkov. Now, the other side it was... I had nowhere to go. So, him aggressing there was probably the, the, the weaker move, I, I would, I'd say. Because I had nowhere to go. There was, I had to go... You can't jump over that barrier. There's a barrier, the last one above the uh, where the escalators are. I think if you got high enough level strength, you'd probably make it over it. But in general, you can't make it over that barrier. Um, so the fact that he tried to, to dive over the... Uh, sorry, to push like he did, probably wasn't the smarter of the moves that he could have done. Um, but he's, he was playing in a smart way as he was aggressing because he wasn't just standing in the same spot pushing in a straight line. He was trying to weave back and forth. He was he was suppressing me, making it so I couldn't really move too much. So as a as a player as a whole, he, he did that really well. I'm worried about these guys now. As a player as a whole, he did well. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, he, he just probably didn't need to aggress there, but... That's what Tarko's like, though. You, it, it all comes down to situations where you could go either way if you play... Like, he could have he could have played it uh, slower, and I could have, like, slowly pe peeked around and maybe got a shot off on him. But he just... For me to even say that, like, he did that wrong, you know, he could have been the right play at the time. He he might have known something that I didn't know as well. He could have had someone coming up behind me that, behind him that he, you know, I didn't know about. What's this? Right, we're taking that. And green gunpowder cells for a bit too. 
I don't know what that sells for, but that's going to be a, a definitely a nice little money boost. Final beacon. This is the one I tried to get to before. I got all the way up to here and then obviously got interrupted. Now, if we want to get the last two manifests, but now we do have to go to the Embercon extract. All right. If we want to get the last manifest, or last two manifests, we could go into Ollie here, grab it as on the right as we go through, and then push straight down to Goshen, go around the back offices and grab it. I'm leaning towards extracting here. I honestly am. Um, the main reason behind it is we've got the quest done. We've already got a fair bit of loot. We aren't rolling in the cash either. Like the problem with the standard account is you kind of can't stay cash heavy. Like you can't just have your your loadout. Sorry, your stash filled with like five different loadouts always ready to go. So I have to vendor a lot of the stuff that I'm, I'm carrying or using. So the play here might be to actually extract. I don't know. I do want to try and give you guys longer episodes, but... That is in the middle. We have to go through Ollie and get uh, through Goshen to get to the quest item. I wish it was a cache. I think it's on the outside. Cache. God. we could do is just go into Ollie. Grab the Ollie one because it's right here. It's located about there. I think we might do that. Grab the Ollie ones and get out. Mag, make sure we're ready to go for whatever it comes away. Now, two scavs spawn down here. Just keeping an eye on. Now, you got to remember, noises give away places. So, is that crunchy glass? It's like a dead giveaway that someone's coming up this way. There's a spot like that on factory that I know exactly when I hear that noise, where that person is. So, it's just... There's someone in the tech store at the moment too. That's sprinting over to the left. That's a player right there in the tech store. We'll hold this out. We don't want that scab knowing that we're here. Or we'll the player knowing we're here. And the manifest is just over there. Not too far away, but we'd have to kill the scabs to get to it. That was a scab that just ran up. You can see his head right there. Huh? 
Ага. Э, ты куда пошел? Insurance fraud. <laughs> Wanna move nice and quick, get our manifest and get out. I don't want to get stuck around here for too long because the scavs, they don't stop. They just start wave spawning really, really quickly. Now we can keep an eye out for car batteries and hoses and stuff as we're running past, but Objective six track now. We have the beauty of our Thordons on at the moment, so we can hear hopefully if anyone's walking around this area. Main fear is someone just waiting for us to walk out that way, but we'll wait and see how that goes. Someone in the distance, then. I didn't pick up that motor, but then I realized I can't get. I think there's someone coming up behind me. Mm -hmm. Scavs can sometimes spawn at the top here. I like to jump off the edge here. A bit more cover as you're running over. Get your stamina back up. Remember how I say about you always want to be able to sprint. Jumping takes so much stamina these days. I've reduced the maximum amount of stamina you actually have by like half. It's pretty brutal. Like you can't run very far these days. these trees as a bit of cover get your stamina up to full and then we're going to hit, hit the extract and that should be enough to get us there never running in a straight line and I'd call that successful race to the worm GG. So, even though we didn't get both the uh, quests done then, we still got one of the two and we got two of the um, the three for the next part. Now, when you do do the manifest quest and some other like it, make sure you actually hand them in. Otherwise, I'll go back in with you on the next raid and if you die, you have to get them again. So, I, I really should point that out now because that can be really frustrating. Um, especially if it's quite hard item to get. Some of the shoreline ones can be quite annoying. For example, um, we only ran into the one player. We avoided pretty much the whole map then. 
If I did, I, if I if I was trying to get that second player, I probably would have hung around a little bit longer and uh, waited for him to push towards me. But I just really didn't see the benefit in it. Now for Blood of War, uh, that's pretty straightforward. We hand that one in. Dress to kill. This is all cowboy hats and yashankas. And we can purchase all these off the flea market. Um, but it will cost us a pretty penny to do it. So here's the manifest to do that. Uh, we still need 12 more scavs. Let's see what these keys are worth. Um, got the checkpoint key and the RB SMP key. Checkpoint 183, we're definitely selling that. Um, about two ammo crates and a weapon box inside the checkpoint, but it is used for a reputation quest. All right, so 179, 123. Let's see if we can get rid of that one. Uh, and the SMP key. Oh, it's lame. It's only 40. 40,000 now if you if they are that cheap just check how much you can sell it to the therapist for 37 and a half so it just as easy to sell it here not pay the fees all right the 220k we don't need for it anymore get rid of that one too all right 1g phone we can sell we definitely need the shush and the xenos later on put them here for now screws and nuts I think I might have sold them, didn't I? All right, for now, let's just chuck them in the middle. Duct tape, we can hold there. Spark plugs, we have seven now. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six. Seven. Or seven. Um, relay's not really needed early on. Threats. Definitely want to hold on to that one. And that's pretty much it. Oh, we'll get a gunpowder. Actually, let's sell the gunpowder. It's good money. Early on. 42,000. 41. Three. That's that done. I think we just sold the key as well, which is nice. And... We have a little bit of money again. So what I want to do here, before I finish up this episode, I'm going to um, buy the Shunker and the Cowboy Hats. But then we can get that quest done. Now, we still need how many? Six Yashanka, seven Cowboy Hats. Try and make it neater before I start spinning all that. Cool. Trading. Hopefully, these ones aren't expensive. These ones will be more expensive than the hats. Oh, they're about... Yeah, they are. One. Two. Three. Four. See if we can get these ones. So you, I spam left click and then press Y. Five. Six. That should be everyone we need for that. And then we have seven cowboy hats. Now cowboy hats are cheaper because there's a barter trade from uh, Ragman level four. There's a barter trade from Ragman level four for cowboy hats. Dog tags, level 10 dog tags to do that. Now this gazelle, we're not gonna claim it. We're gonna need it for a quest later on. We're better off not claiming that yet. Now, um, once we hand in this manifest, we're gonna get more quests, like heaps more quests unlocked to Ragman too. So we need to, um, and we, we want to get both these quests done. Next episode, I don't know exactly what I feel like doing yet. I'm going to take a very short break, maybe a five, 10 minute break, and then I'm going to get into the next episode. I'm either going to go interchange. I don't know if I want to give you guys too much interchange in the, in the one hit. It'll be either interchange or maybe like customs, get work on this side. I would like a little bit more money to get this quest unlocked. It means we need to spend 280K. Too difficult with boss of and stuff. Yeah, something to consider. We also have a vehicle part four to do as well. So, something to think about. We'll, uh, we'll have a short break. But guys, thanks for watching another episode. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for future content. Do stream on Twitch every day of the week. And thank you so much to everyone who's been popping into Twitch and saying g'day. I've um, been getting a lot of positive feedback about the raid series. So, that's awesome. Um, one more episode for the week. If I haven't decided yet, but if I can't get this episode out tonight, um, I'll do Friday, Saturday instead. Just because uh, I've got a lot on. I've, I've, I've done so much over the last week. I've done a photographer course, videographer course over two days. 
I packed up my entire house, chucked it into a trailer and moved it uh, about 750 kilometers, 800 kilometers. What's that, like 500 miles? Um, and I'm streaming from my mum's house at the moment. So lots going on, trying to keep as much content out for you guys, but you know, it is what it is. I'll do my best I can. So guys, like I said, um, check me out on Twitch if you're keen. Otherwise, uh, lastly, I'll see you next time. Yippity do da, yippity day. My oh my, what a wonderful day.